It's been quite the start to the offseason for Alex Anthopoulos, who is trading away everybody, non-tendering everybody, including Kyle Wright, a 21-game winner that was traded as well on Friday. A ton to talk about. Oh, and we got some mailbag questions to answer as well. All that on today's episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on social media at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure you check out my written work over at BravesToday.com, where we've been really busy here the last couple of days. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube if you're new. Hit that thumbs up button as well to help support the channel, help us grow, get more people in here. Our second podcast of the day, because Alex and and the Braves have been that busy. We talked about the Michael Soroka, Aaron Bummer trade on early Friday morning. You want to go back and check that out. We've already had two more trades happen since then with Nick Anderson and um, Kyle Wright both being traded to the Kansas City Royals in separate deals. We also had the non-tender deadline. And I got all your questions that I'm going to try to answer as well. It's going to be a very busy podcast, but looking forward to it. Should be a lot of fun here on a Mailbag Friday episode. Thanks to all those who are joining with me live. I see uh, Joe Mees out here, Henry Holstein, Andrew, AG7, AJ Evans, Chris Kaysen, Anthony Hood, Leslie Anderson, John Edward, Michael, uh, Chris Kaysen, Leland, Matt Jacobs. Thank you so much for joining live. Appreciate everybody out there, all the everydayers. Thank you so much for all the support here at Locked On Braves. Before we get into everything we're going to get into on today's episode, I want to remind you that this one's brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And we are going to get started because there's so much to talk about. And I want to try to answer as many of your questions as I can. Let's start with Probably the biggest news of the day, and that is the Braves trading Kyle Wright to the Kansas City Royals for Jackson Kowar. I don't think anybody saw this coming. You're talking about a guy who just won 21 games, wasn't going to cost you a ton, was about to miss the entire upcoming season, and the Braves shipped him to Kansas City for... Essentially nothing. And I love Jackson Kowar coming out of Florida. Great pitcher. You know, first round pick, 33rd overall pick in the draft. Big stuff in Florida. Big time pitcher. But he's been terrible. I mean, a whip around two at the big league level. Now, there was some confusion whether or not Kowar has an option left. Mark Bowman initially reporting he didn't, which made no sense for doing this move. But it has since been reported that he does, in fact, have an option left. So that makes a little bit more sense in making <laughs> in making this deal, which I think to a lot of people isn't going to make a lot of sense. But let's break it down for a second here. Why would you trade Kyle Wright, a guy that many people were hoping would be part of this big rotation after Max Free leaves in 2025 and beyond? Here's a couple of reasons why I think the Braves move on from him now. I don't think it's so much to do about money. Shoulder injuries are so much different even than elbow injuries. And when you tear the UCL and you got to have Tommy John, yes, you're out for a while, but the success rate for those have become so high. Um, and there's just a good probability of you being able to bounce back from that and still be a good pitcher. There's just not that success with shoulder issues like Kyle Wright has and has you know had in you know throughout his career. Um, that's scary to come back from, and I just I have to believe, and we don't know this. This is pure speculation on my part. You just got to believe that the Braves looked at his medical history and just said, we don't know if this guy is going to be able to come back from this and come back and be the guy that he was before. 
And think about who the Braves also just traded in Michael Soroka, a guy who tore his Achilles twice. The Braves paid him $3 million a year while he recovered and then essentially got nothing out of it. Are you going to do that same thing for Kyle Wright? Now, Kyle Wright's under team control for three more seasons through 2026. So he very well could come back in 2025, you know, have two more good seasons with the Braves before leaving. There's a possibility of that. I just got to believe the Braves looked at his shoulder, you know, the history with his shoulder injuries and said, we don't believe he's going to be able to come back and, and be the guy that he was before. Let's go ahead and cut our losses now so we don't do like we did with Soroka, continue to pay him millions of dollars in hopes of getting something when he comes back. I just got to believe that's what's happening here. Otherwise, this makes no sense in the world. So, again, this is pure speculation on my part, but I have to believe that's what's happening here with Kyle Wright is that the team just doesn't love the medicals and don't think he's going to come back and be that guy. And so they said, we're not going to you know, spend this money on him like we did with Soroka in hopes of getting something once he recovers. And again, shoulder inj injuries are so much more susceptible to coming back and just being lingering things. I think the Braves just decided to go ahead and cut ties. And again, you, you get a reliever back who first round pick really good in college, but just has been terrible at the big league level, but he has that option and you can certainly, you know, play with that. It gives the Braves an arm who does have options that they can move back and forth. Other deal they made with the Royals. They traded Nick Anderson to him or to the Royals for cash consideration. So, Stacking up this cash, getting ready to go out and, and sign Otani, or as some of you have said in, in the, the chat, that maybe this is to you know, lock up Freed or sign Nola. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I certainly don't know, but I know that Alex Anthopoulos knows and has a game plan and certainly trust in what he's doing. But Braves traded Nick Anderson to the Royal for cash considerations. And the Braves non-tendered everyone. They non-tendered Colby Allard. They had already non-tendered Yanni Chirinos, but they announced that. They non-tendered Penn Murphy, who they just acquired, a Angel Perdomo, who they just acquired, Michael Tonkin, Chadwick Trump, and Luke Williams. Look, those last three specifically, and even Allard, because I still am not sure if Allard has an option or not. Again, it's one of those things where roster resources says that he doesn't, um, but he, he may still have one. Either way, Allard seemed like somebody, if he doesn't have options, somebody that was going to get non-tendered. I think I said on the the podcast this morning, on Friday morning, talking about the Michael Soroka trade, I, I said Michael Tonkin, Chadwick Trump, Luke Williams are probably the next guys to go, and they were, along with everybody else. So it's hard to imagine this is simply just a money thing, although by trading, uh, you know, Soroka, by trading Kyle Wright, you know, that frees up four or five million. Yanni Chirino, so had already let go. He was projected to get two million. Nick Anderson was projected to get 1.2 million. Nicky Lopez, four million. Yeah, Michael Tonkin, one million. So, I mean, what are they saving here? 10, 15 million? It's hard for me to believe this is just, this is just about money. But there are 10 open roster spots now. 10. They have 10 open roster spots on the 40-man roster. So clearly, something's going to happen here. You're going to fill those spots. I don't know what the plan is. I see Joe Me saying that Baldwin passed Trump. Very possible. I don't know how much they fully trust him as a catcher defensively, but certainly the bat uh, made a lot uh, of progress this past year. But again, this is just unheard of. <laughs> I mean, to have... This many players just thrown off the roster and you clear up this much roster space. I mean, they're going to have to fill this. I mean, there's at least 10 players they're going to add this offseason. You're not going to go into a season with, you know, more than one or two open spots on the roster. Yeah, Chris Chris Kaysen says, I can see Jake Mastriani's brain turning rapidly. I, I don't know. I, I don't think anybody knows what's going on. Nobody saw the Kyle Wright thing coming. I could have seen them non-tendering Trump, Williams, uh, Tonkin, Allard, like I said, no idea why they just acquired Penn Murphy, who is a good arm. If they thought he was going to come back healthy, they just acquired Angel Perdomo. I mean, again, it, this is just, it's bizarre. I don't know that I've ever seen anything quite like this. So 
I cannot wait to see what's next. I, I'm Look, I'm not losing sleep about anybody that they've gotten rid of, even Kyle Wright, because like I just said, and I believe I talked about it on this podcast when the Kyle Wright news happened, I said, I don't know. I don't know if he'll ever come back and be that guy again. And look, he was trying to come back at the end of this year and didn't make it um, and wasn't able to get back to that. And again, I just, did he re-injure it? You know, what, what are they seeing in that medical, in the medicals for Kyle Wright to say, we don't know if this guy's going to be able to come back from this. I just have to believe that's what happened. Everybody else they let go can be replaced. <laughs> I mean, I'm not losing sleep over, you know, Trump, even though I thought he was a solid, you know, backup minor league catcher, Lucas Williams. Although Lucas Williams was your utility guy now, and they've now gotten rid of Lopez. They got rid of Shoemake. They've gotten rid of Lucas Williams. So, but these guys can all be replaced. I can't wait to see uh, what Alex Andopoulos has up his sleeve. I'm already losing my voice here. The second podcast of the day. But again, this is, I think it's exciting because we're going to see a lot of moves happen this offseason. And if you're a fan, you know, that's really what you want to see in the offseason because there's going to be some dry days, but certainly not right now. This is really, really um, an exciting time in the offseason for fans because there are 10 open roster spots for the Braves. Those are going to have to get filled. Not all of them are going to be exciting. Some of them may be Enola. Some of them may be Snell, as a lot of you are saying in the comment section. Either way, it's going to be a busy offseason for the Braves. And I love what Alex Anthopoulos is doing. He is not he's not sitting back. He's not being complacent with winning you know, six straight division titles, back-to-back 100-win seasons. He's going to shake things up this offseason at the bottom of this roster. Again, not all of these 10 roster spots are going to be filled with big-time moves, but I think there's a concerted effort here to create better depth on the 40-man roster and perhaps hopefully you'll get some bigger moves in here. Uh, and again, I'm just excited about this offseason now. I can't wait to see what happens. So we'll see what does happen next, but I do have a lot of questions that I want to get answered on this mailbag episode. We'll get into those here next. Get into all the action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. Got a lot of football action coming up this weekend. Good opportunity to get that $150 in bonus bets. You've been thinking about joining FanDuel. Now is the time. Let's mention NFL, college football. Hawks are playing right now in the in-season tournament. Well, whatever that is, but there's just so much sports action going on right now outside of Major League Baseball. Still wish it was baseball season, but it'll be here before you know it. And then you can get in on all the action of that with FanDuel as well on their easy to use app. They got betting options, including spreads, player props, over unders, and more. Braves are currently the favorite on FanDuel to win the 2024 World Series at plus 600. And that's with only having 30 players on their 40-man roster. Imagine when they fill out the rest of that roster with Otani and Blake Snell uh, and Nolan, uh, Aaron Nola. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Again, go over to FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get in on all the action. Also visit FanDuel.com slash PlaySafe for tools and resources to help you stay in control of the way you play. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. I'm going to try to get into get in all these questions that I can. I apologize for those who are here live in the chat section. Probably won't be able to get to much of those today. We just got too much to talk about, but I promise I will try to get to those in the comment section if I can um, or, or answer them uh, off the podcast. But uh, you got a lot of questions here on social media. If you don't know, every Friday we do a mailbag podcast. I post a make a post from a lockdown underscore Braves on X. And you respond to that, and I will answer it here on the Mailbag Friday episode, which I will do now. Cass Buckeyes always has great questions submitted for us. Says, I've learned to not doubt AA, but selling as low as possible on right for a guy with a career 9-plus ERA and whip near 2 last year seems bizarre. What is happening? And also said, how much should we read into the Braves clearing this much roster space? Kind of already touched on the Kyle Wright thing. I, I have to believe it's fully the medicals and that they just don't think he's going to recover and they don't want to pay for him to recover through all of this. I, I got to believe that's what it is. And they thought they could go get an arm 
that has some options as bad as that arm maybe has been. The only thing I would read into clearing the roster spots is that Alex really wants to just change up the depth of this roster. And look, they may go out and get another A. Ray Adrianza to fill out this roster and get some cheap, you know, solid bench players like that, that they know are going to be cheap. Again, all 10 of these roster spots are not going to be filled by, you know, mega deals, star players. Some of these are going to be filled out like for with players who are similar to the guys they just non-tendered. Um, but I think some of these, I think some of this is certainly to set up to make hopefully some big moves. Kaz Buckeyes also asked, how would you rank the following players by how much F4 they produce in 2024? Bummer Lee Matzik. I'd probably go Bummer Matzik Lee. I think Lee has an option left. And, you know, it was a it was a tough season for Dylan Lee last year. I still believe in the arm. Um you know, Matic, they're going to play. He's on a big league contract. Dylan Lee does have options left. So I could see him spending time back in the minor leagues if they don't want to carry for lefties. Uh, I, I believe in Bummer. I think he's going to have a very good season in Atlanta. So I'd say Bummer, Matic, Lee. Bellfire, a couple of questions. Knowing what has happened and what could, who do you see being the opening day starting rotation after free agency and trade? So a good question. Obviously, Strider, Freed. Charlie Morton's going to be your top three. I think that four spot's going to be filled by somebody big. I think it's going to be a trade. I don't think it's going to be Tyler Glass now. I'm going to stick with Dylan Cease. I'm going to go that route. They've already worked with the White Sox once. We've saw today where they made two deals with the Royals. I think they go back to the White Sox. I think Dylan Cease is your third, four starter, however you want to you know put that together. And I think Bryce Elder will be your fifth to start the year. Uh, I think, you know, if I had to predict now, that's probably my opening day rotation. Also from Bellfire, would you rather have a top tier starter in Grissom and left or a clear upgrade at left and a back end starter? I'd rather have Grissom and left in a, in a, a top tier starter. Uh, top tier starters are just a lot much harder to come by. And I think Grissom will be fine in left field, you know, offensively and I think de- defensively. As well, so I'd go for the top tier starter in Grissom and left field. Agon says, should AA add cheap infield depth or try upgrading shortstop and move Arcia to the backup role? Not sure who, but left-handed shortstop with more power can make a good platoon with Arcia. I think this is a great call out as well. I've been saying that all offseason. My dream scenario is that they they find that perfect shortstop, not even a platoon. Agon, Agon's talking about a left-handed platoon partner. My hope this offseason is that something just falls into their lap at the shortstop position and they can find that shortstop of the future. I don't know who that is, but if if something comes up and they're able to pull that off and move Arcia to a bench role, I would love to see that happen. And I think I think I think AA will certainly, you know, keep his eyes open for that. I'm not predicting it and I don't think it's going to happen because then I don't I don't see a clear path out there for that to happen, but you know, didn't really see Sean Murphy happening last offseason either. JJ says, if the Braves actually commit to moving Grissom to left field, the Braves need to trade for Hassan Kim. He's only got a year left on his contract. Would you trade Bryce Elder and J.R. Ritchie for Kim? He is a prime extension candidate as well. A lot depends on what the Padres are going to do over there. I do like Kim. I talked about him a lot last year that I thought he was a great candidate for the Braves to trade for to be their shortstop. And that would certainly be a solution because he's really solid defensively probably is more of a shortstop. I'd have to look at the numbers, but uh, I would love, you know, if Kim is available and again, have no idea what the Padres are doing over there this season, they're likely going to trade Soto. Um, You know, would they give up Kim who's on a very team friendly deal and is a really talented all around player? Uh, I, I don't know. Hit 260 last year, 350 on base, 17 home runs, uh, 38 stolen bases. I mean, he doesn't have the greatest batted ball data, but a really good all-around player and, you know, is solid defensively, good sprint speed. So I'd be all for getting Hassan Kim. Uh, again, if depending on what the Padres want to do, would I give up Bryce Helder and J.R. Ritchie? I really like J.R. Ritchie, but he is going to, you know, he's having Tommy John. He's going to be out all of 2024. I think that's probably a pretty fair deal for him, even for one year of Kim. But, uh, I'd hesitate a little bit on pulling the trigger on that. I like Bryce Elder still. I think he's going to be a solid back of the rotation arm. 
Um, but I do like Kim, and I think he would help a lot. Dustin Mounts, Ozuna seems to have an up year than a down year for a lot of his career. Do you think it would be possible to package him with A.J. smith Shaver or Waldrop and another player for a good starting pitcher, then save some money signing another DH or using it for the catchers to hit more? Uh, I don't get the last part of that, but um, I, I don't know about trading Ozuna. It's one year left. He was one of your better bats last year. I mean, if this is about trimming money, and this is what the Braves are trying to do, whether to you know, extend Max Freed or go out and get a, a Yamamoto or some you know, Aaron Nola, Blake Snell, if that's really what they're trying to do then and you want to trade Ozuna, then sure, I wouldn't package him with Shaver or Waldrop. Uh, I wouldn't give up either one of those unless you're getting a top-of-the-line starting pitcher with years of control. And Corbin Burns is not that. He only has one year of control. Not sure how many years of control Freddie Peralta has, but uh, Glass now is not that either. One year of control, and that's too much in my mind for Dylan Cease, who does have two years of control. But um, again, if you if you needed to save money because you felt like you could make an upgrade, big upgrade somewhere else, and somebody was willing to take on all of Ozuna's contract, Sure, but then you're creating a hole at DH, and it's another hole you have to go fill. So I don't know if I'm fully on board with that. Brad Horn, how would you feel about MLB having an award show similar to the CMAs where players, fans get dressed up for red carpet, get their awards on stage in front of their teammates, rivals, and fans, say a few words when they receive an award? I think it's a good idea. Um, you know, it's a way to bring everybody together, kind of have an ESPYs type uh show like that but it's also the players off season i don't think the players would be all for it maybe they would it's a chance that you know even if you don't win you get to go to the party have a good time all that uh i like it i'll be honest i probably don't even know that i would watch it so um i think it's a good idea i don't think it's necessary dustin mounts also asked what would you what would be your realistic top options for bench players be based on who is available that's something I haven't really dove into. Um, I will say Luke Waddell, who I've talked about a lot on here, I think he's somebody that I don't know if he has a shot to get the opening day roster, but he's probably next in line to be that utility bench role. And you know, he had a really solid season in 2023. I think he'd be next up in line there for that job. Uh, but I haven't, I haven't really. Search the free agent market looking for bench utility guys. Those guys are out there, and the Braves will be able to find them and get them pretty cheap. So uh, I'm not too worried about that. I would love for them to get some solid, you know, veteran guys to fill those roles and some good guys for the clubhouse. But here's the thing: Braves don't need a bench. I mean, all their position players are playing every day. With the DH, the bench is somewhat irrelevant in today's game for the Braves, at least there are other teams that are going to mix and match players, the Dodgers, you know, a team in particular, they're going to mix and match and play matchups. The Braves don't do that. Their bench is non-essential unless an injury comes up. It is non-essential Baltimore Braves fan. Aside from Waldrip, who are some minor league pitchers you think will make their debut next season? Good question. I, I really I really don't know. Uh, Luis Di Avila was the one who I thought if he sticks around, and maybe he will, maybe he survives the Rule 5 draft, I think he could be the next one to get an opportunity. But everybody's had their chance at this point. You know, uh, I don't think Owen Murphy is pushing his way up that quickly. I don't think Spencer Schwellenbach is going to get pushed that quickly. Certainly none of the other guys that just got drafted, like Cade Keeler or uh, – Drew Hackenberg, unless one of those guys is going to get put into a bullpen role. I just don't see who else is really realistically knocking on the door to get uh, an opportunity like that. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, again, unless somebody's getting a bullpen role like a, a young Carlos Lara, if he just went off and had a great year and the Braves needed some help in the bullpen, I think he'd be dynamite in a as a bullpen in a bullpen role, but. I really don't know, and I don't even know if Waldrop does, to be honest with you, but he certainly would be you know, the next obvious choice. JDK, Jake, you rightly mentioned the Braves don't use their bench, but with fatigue setting in for the regular uh, regulars last season, don't you think Vaughn could become a super utility, can get his bat in the lineup multiple games a week for Ozzie Orlando, potentially left field? Yeah, I've been 
Again, saying that for over a year now, turn him into the Braves version of Chris Taylor. It's exactly what they should do and what they ho- uh, hope they will do. Um, got a lot of other questions I want to get to. Uh, several of them on here I still haven't gotten to answer yet. I'll try to get to all of those here next. Jumping back into the questions. I want to thank everybody for being here, by the way. we got over 350 people here listening live. Thank you so much for all the support, whether live or watching the replay. Got a couple more questions I want to answer. Brandon Kirkwood says, what is the next move the Braves make? <laughs> that is a uh, that is an unanswerable question because I have no idea what Alex Anthopoulos is doing. It's probably going to be some minor move to fill out the bench. They need somebody who can play infield uh, right now. So if I had to guess, the next move is probably to get a veteran utility infielder for the bench. JDK says, Jay, call it out now. Do the Braves sign Nola? No. It's just, it's one of those things. Until I see it, I just cannot believe that the Braves are going to give six years, $150 million or more to a starting pitcher. We just haven't seen it. And it, I just, I can't. I can't fathom it until it actually happens. So I'm going to say no. I don't think they're going to sign Nola. I don't think they're going to sign Snell. I don't think they're going to sign Yamamoto. As fun as Wednesday's podcast was, I don't think they're going to sign Otani, but they're going to do something. And I can't wait to see what that something is. Dustin Mounds, 10 roster spots open. What do you think is going on and and going to happen? Is it money saving or big plans? So we already talked about this. I think I think it's a little bit money savings, but again, you're not saving a whole lot on this. I, I think it's more opening up roster spots and trying to create better depth on the roster. But I'll be honest, I have no idea what Alex Anthopoulos is planning right now and what is up his sleeves because you didn't have to get rid of these guys right now. Even if you tender them a contract, you can still you know drop them before the regular season starts and not pay the full amount. And none of these were... Big ticket items, except for Nicky Lopez making four million. Again, I always said it kind of made sense not to non tender him because it's just a lot of money to play for somebody who's not going to see the field a lot. But this is a lot of roster spots and guys you didn't have to cut, guys you didn't have to get rid of right now, or a lot of them, anyways. So I don't know. I think some things are definitely in the works. What that is, and nobody knows except for Alex Anthopoulos, who is a master of keeping everything silent and in-house. Matthew says, with all the moves of starting pitchers and opening up 40-man spots, do you think it's a real possibility we get two proven starters, Sonny Gray, Nola, and like a Giolito type? I, I could see a Sonny Gray type and a Giolito type um, or a Sonny Gray type and a Luis Severino type, like I've mentioned in the past. I think that is certainly a possibility. Matt Cox asks, what do you think we do as far as infield depth now that Lopez and Shoemaker are gone? Kind of talked about that already. They'll probably find some veteran you know, utility infielder for a million or two just to fill out the bench. I don't think they're going to do anything crazy there. Maybe Luke Waddell gets an opportunity for that bench spot. Uh, had a little bit of time in AAA last year, but mostly at AA where he was really solid. Chris Sunderstrom says, would like to see more formal MLB award ceremonies. Seems like a lost opportunity right now. They just announced it on MLB tonight. It minimalizes and trivi- trivializes these significant accomplishments. Um, Mookie was in his car. Again, it'd be cool. Uh, I think it'd be another kind of event. You could make something of it. As a fan, for me, I don't need it. Um, but you know, it would be cool to have some sort of ESPYs like celebration and do all these awards in one night. I think they try to spread it out over you know, an entire week to, you know, get some sort of news stuff every single day for one week. But again, I think it'd be pretty cool to have a red carpet type show for this. JJ, isn't it pretty much guaranteed Grissom will not be traded after Shoemaker and Lopez being shipped off? The only other viable closest candidate would be Luke Waddell playing every day if someone got hurt, if you traded Vaughn. That's a good point as well. And discussed it, I think, in the comment section on one of the latest videos. I don't see how you trade Vaughn Grissom now, after you just got rid of Nikki Lopez, after you just got rid of Braden Shoemake, how do you then trade Von Grissom as well? And you let Luke Williams go, which Luke Williams can be replaced. I get that. But how do you then now trade Von Grissom? <laughs> I mean, wh- 
I've talked a lot on here about the lack of middle infield depth in the system, particularly guys who I think can be starters. I don't know there's any starter at the upper level right now outside of Vaughn Grissom, somebody that you could say, you know, you plug them in if somebody gets injured and they could start and fill in for Arcia or Ozzy. And they just got rid of essentially three guys who were somewhat, you know, dependable. Um, or at least you felt somewhat good about. So, yeah, I, I don't know how you trade Von Grissom right now. Big Dog 73, how on earth is this Kyle Wright beneficial to the organization? I don't see the upside. I know he's out for this year, but he's under team control through 26. We've touched on that a lot. Again, the only explanation is that they just don't like the medicals and don't think that he's going to come back. Uh, also from Big Dog, since we traded Shoemaker and Lopez, who will be our middle infield depth and what kind of cash considerations did we trade for Anderson? They don't uh, include that information, the cash that we get back in that deal um, yet. Um, as far as middle infield depth, we talked about that as well. It's Von Grissom right now and Luke Waddell. That is your middle infield depth at the moment, but I'm assuming they would go out and get some other, you know, they're going to get some other guys, some veteran players to fill those roles. So that is this podcast, this mailbag episode, which turned into so much more with all of the news. Thank you so much for that. Luke Martin, first time com commenter. Love your stuff. Thanks so much for joining. and Appreciate that. JK talking about uh, Jung Ho Lee. I know a lot of people have mentioned that name to me in the comment section. I just don't know much about them and you never know how that's going to translate. There's been so many hitters coming over from international ranks that had incredible numbers and seemed like locks to come to Major League Baseball and have success and they just didn't. So could he? Yes. Will he? Uh, nobody really knows. Um, all right, that, that'll do it for this episode. Again, thanks so much for joining. Thanks for all the comments. Almost 400 people in here right now live. Thank you so much for that, coming in here with me and joining this episode on a Friday night. Hopefully you enjoyed this show. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button. Over, over 7,600 subscribers on YouTube now. Take one more question here from Peter D'Amico. Jake, will Alex Anthopoulos extend Freed? with this with more money let's hope so let's hope that's what they're doing here let's end this on a high note and hope that the braves are freeing up all this money to get max freed extended hope that's the case alan chris Kaysen, so many of you joe me thank you so much for the support here asking everybody hit that thumbs up button i would really really appreciate it you enjoyed this show i'll be here with you all off season five days a week through next season as well. We're here all the time talking Atlanta Braves baseball. So come join Locked On Braves. Would have loved to have you as part of our everyday gang here at Locked On Braves. Well, that will do it for this episode. Again, make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to the Locked On Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. And we will talk to you next time.